<clears throat> and we're live. All right, all right, all right. Now listen, normally in this opening monologue, I tell you about all the things that went wrong and things that went bad and just my overall thoughts on the game. And I'm going to give you those. I'm going to give you those. But I'm going to tell you what, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I mean this from the bottom of my soul. I mean this at my very core, the things that even if I had not been taught anything, any language, any those parts of me, I mean this from there. There is nothing but celebration tonight. There is nothing but goodness tonight. There is nothing but, oh my God, this is a group that we have got to embrace, that we have got to love on, that we have got to tell how special they are tonight. We can talk about the things that weren't perfect on Monday, but tonight you beat your rival by three touchdowns. Tonight you close out the regular season on it. Grayson, how long of a winning streak was? I think it was one, two, three, four, five. Five of them things to close out the regular season. But tonight we talk about the fact that if there's a child born in the world or who is younger than four years old, they don't know a world where <laughs> NC State has lost to the boys and baby blue in football. Any, and, and listen, anytime you got a family member who's who's a Carolina person to the death, if they got a baby younger than three, just look at their kid and tell them, hey, that little one doesn't know a world where UNC has beat NC State in football. And, and from start to finish, opened up a can of whoop ass from start to finish. Uh, you know, this is a moment. This is a moment where I have nothing negative to say. I have nothing to detract. I have nothing to say other than 3920. Undefeated since Grayson and I said every game is winnable and every game is losable. And lo and behold, look at us now. Reverse psychology. We may never pick NC State again. Listen, we may never do it again. We we joke about this. I don't know if I will ever pick NC State to win a football game ever again. Again, Can't until I'm proven wrong. The Can't bowl game, forget about it. We're going to lose the bowl game by five touchdowns. I don't Fitty. care who we play. By fifty. I don't care if we play one of the teams that, that got in off of uh, grades. I don't because apparently there aren't enough teams eligible for bowl games this year. Can you believe that? But anyway, I don't care who we draw. They're going to beat us. They're just a superior team. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. Man, what a time. What a time to be alive. What a time. And we're going to get into mainly this 39-20 win. But what a day in Wolfpack Athletics overall. The women dominate the number three team in there. They don't beat them. They dominate them. They scored more points in one half than Colorado scored in the first three quarters. Then they scored the first three quarters. And then you come to this game where NC State whoops the wheels off this team. Where our guys who you expect to be guys to become legends in this moment, either they became a legend or cemented their legacy in this moment. Come on. Come on. Come on with it. Come on with it. There, there's nothing else I can say. Just greatness all around. This is this was a win. This was a performance. This was something that I can't critique. I can't say nothing about, but wow, what a win. Shout out to Dave Dorn. Shout out to Robert and I. Shout out to Tony Gibson. Shout out to everybody who wore red and white tonight. Because, boy, it's a parade inside of Raleigh. Yeah, this is a wolf. The link is officially out, so we'll now get into this. Of course, we always start with our monologue. NC State, wire to wire, woodshed. Woodshed over yeah. UNC, 39 to 20. And to get off to the hot start, you had to know that the boys were going to come out the gate fired up. And they were absolutely every bit of that. The defensive intensity from the jump was there. Peyton Wilson, we're going to get into Peyton Wilson, don't you worry about that, was there. Jalen Scott was there. The defensive line. C.J. Clark was an animal tonight. Red Hibbler was an animal tonight. Savion Jackson was an animal tonight. They were all there. Yeah. And to get out to that early lead, we've been talking about it for weeks now, get ahead and stay ahead. 
crushed it. Mm-hmm. So some of these early drives, I, I promise I will do little to zero complaining tonight. You can't complain after a win like this. Some of the offense, it's the same thing it has been all year. You would have liked to get six in a couple of the early drives. You'll take the points. It ended up not mattering. But Casey Concepcion playing for some series on one leg out there. Dog. Yeah. How, how, like at this point of the season, how are teams not stopping him? How do they not know where the ball is going? They know, they know we have effectively one major playmaker and we are still dicing every single team we play with one person. That is unbelievable. And it speaks to the talent of KC. Blank check that man. Brinks truck yeah. that man. Whatever yeah. he wants, he gets it. Well, we, we've had to rule anybody but KC for weeks now. And look who I'll showed that up. up. Look, yeah, look who showed up. But look who showed up to the party. We had the senior citizen connection for one of our longest plays of the day. Brennan Armstrong to Rosner on the third down. That was crucial on the scoring drive. We had Keon Lesane contributing ma- majorly at multiple points where we were like, man, we could use a score here. Keon Lesane stepped up. We had multiple guys come through and, and, and show out in, in spurt, spurts here. Porter Rooks. We had a Porter Rooks sighting. Anthony Smith. How many times have you heard me say, I know that Anthony Smith is fast. That's why they keep putting him on goal balls. But what if we just got him the ball early and said, Absolutely. use that speed? Lo and behold, Dakari Collins using all that big frame of his. Bean I've been top. waiting for that all season long. We Bean finally top. did it on the biggest stage. And not to mention, on top of the touchdown, really, there was also a call back pass interference that would have extended the drive because of Dakari Collins' size. Everybody showed up. Everybody contributed. This is what I like to see. Big, big Deborah Mims getting shifty in the red zone on his touchdown run. This is what I like to see. This is complimentary football at its finest. The defense came out and was lights out to start the game. Do you know how many yards? Congratulations. If you are listening to us speak to you right now, you had as many passing yards in the first quarter as Drake made. Congratulations. That is a fact, by the way. That is a fact. If you are listening to me right now, Drake May and you had the same amount of pass yards in the first quarter through the first 15 minutes of the game. I I couldn't believe how bad he looked in the first portion of this game. And I, I knew it wasn't going to last forever. Yeah. But we got after him from the jump, and you saw it make a difference. And I, I yeah. tweeted, Drake May shooketh. And then, of course, that's when he took off after that. But – to, to hold him to absolutely nothing through the air in the first quarter, set the tone immediately, immediately. Carolina, you know go ahead. Th- that's, a team that, that's a team that was phoning it in. Yes. That's a team that wasn't very interested in being there. Yes. And me and you talked about this off air before this, this uh, yep. show, but the idea that Carolina was like, oh, this is your Super Bowl. My brothers in Christ, we have the same record. Yeah. What do you mean? This should be our Super Bowl as well. Why does this not matter to you? Well, listen, if it don't matter to you, don't worry. It's going to be belt to ass season. Is that, That's what it's going to be. You got wolf back after dark. Normally, I don't use that word on this show, but that's just what it is. That's just <laughs> well, what it is. Sorry, okay? David. <laughs> hey, I, I, Mr. Locke, if you got to find me, take it out my check. But the reality <laughs> is this is a rivalry game. I hate those guys. You should hate us too. But if you don't hate us, that's fine with me. If you don't dislike us enough, you know, I was hearing all that. They remember the disrespect. The memory ain't work out too good for you, huh? Those memories just didn't inspire you to nothing, huh? It, it activated that flight in your fight or flight mode, huh? <laughs> this here is a moment. And, and I'm going to say this about Peyton Wilson because we've talked about him a lot. But I want to say this very genuinely. The stat line from tonight, insane. Another one of those performances, just the patented Peyton Wilson, Peyton Wilson performance. And I mean this with everything in my heart and soul. If the Louisville game goes differently, Peyton Wilson is getting an invite to New York for the Heisman. Yeah. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. After this game, after this game here, come on now. Come on. It's, it's wild, and we talked about this 
on uh, on the pregame show with Isaac from from Locked On Heels. He was asking, "What do you expect from Peyton Wilson in this game?" And I said, "Well, I kind of expect exactly what we've seen from him all year, which is an absurd stat line." And then Peyton Wilson goes out there and probably gives his best performance of the year in arguably the biggest game against your rival who he was previously committed to six years, senior senior night, last home game. And he goes out and he has what? 15 tackles, a pick, a couple TFLs. Did he, I think he forced a fumble. A sack, a forced fumble. Yeah. You I know, mean, it's a Peyton Wilson stat line through and through. Yeah. You know, I, and, and I'm going to say this, my only criticism of Peyton, Peyton Wilson, he's a stat pattern. That's him. <laughs> he he doesn't he doesn't play to win the game. He just plays because it's it's unfathomable to think how far ahead he is compared to almost every other player statistically in America. When you look at the amount of players who have the same number of interceptions as him, none of them have the same amount of tackles. When you look at the players that have the same amount of tackles as him, how many of them have as many sacks and tackles for loss? When you look at the players who have many tackles for loss and sacks, who has as many interceptions? When you combine all these matrices to say through any statistical category who's the best, Peyton Wilson's always going to come out to be your guy every single time. So the thought that anybody else wins any type of defensive award for defensive player year that he's in, yeah, packing the mail, it's gone. It's gone. Cut it down. Yeah, I know it Peyton, ain't Peyton said on ACC Network in the post game, they're asking him how he was going to celebrate, and he kind of smirked and said, that's between me and my friends. I hope NC State is inviting all of his friends back to the stadium because you can't let Peyton go to bed tonight without his number being retired in Carter Finley. Do it tonight. There is no reason to wait any longer. Yeah. That number needs to be up amongst the greats in this football program. Yeah. He has earned every bit of it. And you mentioned the awards. He's going to be taking home some hardware here in a couple of weeks. The Nagurski deserves it. The Butkus deserves it. Yep. ACC Defensive Player of the Year deserves Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Nobody close. else stacks up to 11. Nobody. 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 Kirk Herbstreet said it this morning on College Game Day that nobody's really talking about NC State and that Peyton Wilson's been the best linebacker in the country. Fact. Peyton find me, a better, find me a better defender in the country. Find me a better defender yeah. in the country. Peyton, Peyton Wilson went out there tonight and stamped it in red ink. Fact. I am him with two with two ones. H yeah. double one M him. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you this much. I do agree that from this day forward, anybody to wear that 11, you need a patch. Just like anybody wearing 16, just like anybody wearing 81, just like anybody wearing number nine. Any you need a patch to commemorate how special of a player Peyton Wilson has been. To commemorate how impactful he has been, to commemorate how much he's meant to NC State. It's insane. It's insane when you really think about the fact that, again, like I, I said it earlier, and I'm going to say it multiple more times throughout this show. If, if you know of a child that is under the age of four, they do not know a world where NC State has lost to UNC at football. And again, Peyton Wilson in particular, show me a season where he played more than half the games and he didn't get 90 plus tackles. That man is a machine. It's nothing. It is, it is nothing else, nothing else that you can say other than, Hey, this team, this team here, especially Peyton Wilson, the heart, the grit, the determination, the stick to the, Oh, you know, in today's day and age, a lot of people say playoff or bust. Oh, if we don't go to the playoff, uh, what's the point? We saw a team tonight that said, oh, you know, we ain't going to ACC championship. Uh, what's the point? Yeah. And you know what this team said? We got plenty to play for. We got plenty to play for. We got plenty to do. And they did. And they did. So, you know, I, I give all the love in the world to this team. Kevin Concepcion, a freshman, had no reason to tough it out the way he did. No reason. And yet he did anyway. What time? What a time. What this, a time. Is, this is an interesting question here from Bart Brown. Does Peyton Wilson play in the bowl game? I'll tell you this. For, for specific players protecting their draft stock at the end of the year, whatever that may be, I think Peyton Wilson is absolutely the guy that understands this and still plays. 
I would completely understand if he didn't. Yeah, if he I didn't, I wouldn't point. criticize him for it. If yeah. he didn't, I wouldn't criticize him for it. Um, if he wanted to, good. It's all the same to me. Yeah, it's all the same to me. I have nothing to say to that young man, nothing to do to that young man, but sing his praises. If he decides to play another game in the red and white, or if this was his last game in red and white, more power to you, brother. More power to you because you know there is. There is nothing else that we can ask of this young man. Nothing. Nothing. And again, I've talked about this before. I've talked to multiple draft experts, had draft experts on this show, on this show before Grayson got here. And what did they say about Peyton Wilson? He's a known commodity. Yep. Everybody knows exactly how good he is. The question is about his health. And he really can improve that question if he gets hurt this year. That was two years, or that was, yeah, that was two years ago. And he got hurt. And so at that point, his th- draft is what it is. It, it just is what it is. Everybody knew he was going to be an animal. Everybody knew he was going to do great things, but everybody knows the question is, can he stay healthy? He came back, not under a situation where it's like, hey, if you come back and play a full year, people are going to love you. He came back knowing, I have much more risk to this than potential game. And look what he's done. So if he decides not to play this bowl game, I'm fine with that. If he wants to play 100 snaps in the bowl game, I'm fine with that too. Whatever Peyton wants to do for this last one, brother, more power to you. I support you. He's earned every bit of it, whatever he decides. I'm going to pay a quick bill here, and then we're going to get into what we saw from the NC State offense in this game. Our first sponsor of this live show is eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, that's what brings home the winning trophy. But it's also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, LED kits, LED kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. That's because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Now, getting into this NC State offense that we saw tonight, I believe they said on the telecast, we scored on our first eight drives of the game. We didn't even punt until very late in the game when we saw a little bit of the same offensive frustrations from weeks prior, Robert and I, again, cooking. Masterclass. And we, Masterclass. We, we've been telling folks on this program for weeks, despite the struggles that we saw in the middle of the season, Robert and I was schematically coming up with magic. And as the offense progressed, the players got more comfortable in the system. The offensive line got better. The quarterback play as a whole got better. The wide receivers even got better. You know, you have KC on another on another level, but you really saw Robert and I step out and show you his bag these last couple of weeks. More of that tonight. The funky formations, one of which that comes to mind first, when you had what four spread way out wide. Carolina had no idea what to do with that, and it was a walk in touchdown for KC. The easiest one of their defenders you can imagine. One of the defenders shot the fake an injury to like yeah. get play stop. Fell on the ground, That's- flopping like a fish to get the play stop. Yeah, just I mean, embarrassing. just another masterclass from Robert and I. And and I'll say this too: we said earlier this week that Carolina's pass defense, I believe, was in dead last in the ACC. Mm-hmm. Well, you saw it tonight because Armstrong threw for three thirty four. Yeah. Everything you saw earlier in the season, did you ever think? you'd see a number that big from Armstrong this year. I'll be honest, no. I'm I'm going to say yes only because of how bad UNC's defense is. Well, Everybody called me a hater. Everybody called me a hater and said I was being biased when I said this is a team that was dead last in the conference last year in passing defense, and they replaced all four of their starters and their defensive backs coach. And everybody told me, well, it's addition by subtraction. It's addition by subtraction. Baby, this is college football, okay? (laughs) I'm sorry to tell you this. I'm sorry to have to. And I'm going to touch y'all's shoulder when I say this. If there are any fans of the boys in Baby Blue, or if you want to send this to them, clip this and send it to them. 
you don't get better replacing every single player in college. It's not how it works. That's never how it works. Look at Coach Prime up there in Colorado, right? You replaced a, a one-win team and he got better because that was a one-win team. That wasn't the case with North Carolina. Yes, their passing defense was terrible, but again, they had nothing coming back. And lo and behold, they get exposed once again for the fact that th those boys can't cover grass. That's, you know, this offense dominated from start to finish. From start up until we kind of, you know, took our foot off the gas. And um, this is a situation where, again, Robert and I, masterclass. Brendan Armstrong playing through the pain because we know that he was hurting to be sliding, to be diving and, and not trying to take a hit. And also, I don't know if you noticed this or not, his padding on one side was a little bit thicker than it normally is. This was a moment where this offense, led by Brennan Armstrong, went absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, and I'll, I'll parlay that into, I guess, my bigger Brennan Armstrong discussion. We said this earlier in the week, after the turnaround, the midseason point, and MJ sits back down, Armstrong gets plugged back in, the offense as a whole looks better, he comes out, gives his best performance of the year against UNC, Brennan Armstrong is now an NC State legend. In a sense of, of like a Ben Finley, not a Russell Wilson, obviously, but Brennan Armstrong this season, I will remember Brennan Armstrong as an NC State Wolfpacker for a long time. The way, the way he didn't hang his head when he got sat down on the bench and instead turned up the teammate ability. He pushed Absolutely. MJ to be better. He rallied the guys around MJ, did everything he yeah. could to do whatever it took to make this team a better team. And the way that they used Armstrong earlier in the season with MJ at quarterback, I didn't necessarily agree with. I thought some of the, the run packages as they were presented were kind of dumb. I'll be honest, mm -hmm. but this guy stuck with this program no matter what all year. And look where we are now. You plug him back in. He picks up three massive wins, two of which were on the road in places we don't win very often. Comes yeah. back home in his last game in the red and white and lays it on UNC. Brennan Armstrong deserves all of our respect. A lot of folks still owe him apologies that I hope he receives here in the coming weeks because he, he, he should get each and every one of those. And Absolutely. it wasn't just him. It wasn't just Armstrong that turned around this season, but that's a massive part of this turnaround. Absolutely. And again, it's, it's funny. I've seen folks kind of say this. We went from hoping we never see him play again to kind of hoping we could see him play for us again next year. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. Offense, absolutely spectacular. Defense, off, absolutely spectacular. Dante is Walker. Oh, man, you're going to do it. <laughs> mm. You're going to do it. What happened? I was told that Aiden White was, you know, it was going to look bad. He was going to be chopped liver and all that. Fun fact. Fun fact. Uh, yes, that was me in the car, Hudson. Fun fact. Fun fact about uh, Dante Walker in this game. Do you know how many receptions he had on uh, Aiden White this game? Let me pull up my numbers. One. Oh, he had wrong. one reception. He it's had one reception. Number. The touchdown he caught, Aiden White was not. They had to hide that man from Aiden White. Mm. They had to hide that man from Aiden White. And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this thing is simple. This thing is very simple to me. That is, I, that is one of the best defensive backs in the nation. One blank period. Best one in the ACC by a good by a good bit. And he's one of the best in the nation all day long. Fun fact about Aiden White and Tez Walker in this game. As many passes were completed to Wolfpack defenders as they were to Tez White when Tez White was targeted when covered by Aiden White tonight. He had one reception and another one of them ended up being the tip that Peyton Wilson intercepted. I know. Now, listen, Governor Cooper, don't write a letter to get this show shut down. Don't write a letter <laughs> to, to, to get A. Dwight put off the team or anything like that. Save your pen, brother. A, Attorney General, same thing. Save your pen. Keep it to yourself. But the reality is 
Aiden White started off this season a little bit slow as well. He picked it up majorly down the stretch. And so now all of a sudden, you look up and you say, man, every part of this team has just gotten better and better and better and better in a way that doesn't even make sense. If you really think about this, the secondary lost multiple starters. Okay, beyond that, this offense lost starting quarterback changes. The other star quarterback sits down under his own recognizance. We lose our running back one. We lose our running back two. Okay. We barely saw Bradley Rosner throughout the season. Sometimes it was a healthy scratch. Okay. The tight ends rarely ever getting involved. And yet somehow, here we go. Here we go. We find a way. We do the thing. We get the win. Not only this win, five in a row to get us to nine, to give us the opportunity to have 10 at, at, in this type of season. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up until you add in that there is something that this Wolfpack team knows and has at a higher degree than we've seen from most other teams around the country. And that, my friends, is grit. That's what's under that third rib. What's under that third rib? That is something that is not quantifiable. It is not measurable, but you can see it. You can feel it. You can feel that this team rallied around each other and said, I'm not quitting on you. You're not quitting on me. We're going to get tougher. We're going to get better. And that's just what they did. Yeah, and I know we referenced that Duke loss a lot because ultimately it was the turning point in the season. But again, we say, did you ever think that we would finish in a position like this after a loss like that. I'll tell you who did believe that we could do this. Peyton Wilson did. Brennan yeah. Armstrong did. Dave yeah. Dorn did. Tony Gibson did. This team believed that there was a lot more meat on the bone than people wanted to think that there was. And look mm-hmm. where we are now. Nine and mm-hmm. three. Ten wins is still on the table. That, is, that will be, if it happens program history it's only and, ever happened one other time and let me take it a step further a lot of people are asking you know hey who who else jersey do we need to retire and all this if this team wins 10 games bring them back every 10 years have reunions hang a banner i don't, I don't know about hanging a banner but have a reunion every 10 years bring this team back regularly because this team is special yeah this team is special there's something special about this team and i'll tell you what If this team does get to 10 wins, I don't see how you can leave a power five team, a 10 win power five team, a power five team that finished off the season with six straight wins out of the top 15, maybe even 10. And I know that some people are going to look at me crazy and say, oh, this isn't a top 10 team. Who do you feel comfortable with saying, hey, I know for a fact this Wolfpack team could not compete right now? How many teams? How many? You can't name me 10. You cannot name me 10 from around this country where you're like, hey, that team, uh, we got no shot. We got no shot. So the reality is, and and the other part of this, of why I said this team is so special, remember when people were talking about this was a rebuilding year after the Notre Dame game? Yeah. Hmm. What happened to that? Hmm. Ain't that interesting. A, a potential, either way it goes, even if you lose a vote, a nine-game rebuilding year? Hmm. Hmm. What a time. What a time. Listen, and I I didn't exactly come here to collect. Preseason, I told you, this team has the talent to win nine games, maybe more. Hello. Nine and three. Yeah. And we're going to get a good bowl game. I saw my guy Trevor Everett in here asking about bowl game predictions. I'll talk about that in just a second. I think I have a pretty good idea on where we end up. But – This team, man, and I think I've also seen this comment float around. I think the first time I saw it came from Alec Lauer, but the the quickness to which this team became panic mode, mode, panic mode to one of the most entertaining, fun, likable teams that we've had at NC State in such a long time is absurd. Again, I will think about this team in 2023 for a long time, a long yeah. time. The turnaround yeah. in the midseason point, it, you have quarterback controversy, you have multiple players red shirt in the middle of the season with plenty to play for still, a lot going on there, and still 
we get to nine wins. Multiple players transfer out of the program midseason. Yes. Another another burning question here that folks have been tossing around on social media. Do you think that this is Dave Dorn's best coaching job this season? Yes. I would yeah, agree. I don't, I don't. Here's the thing. What could you argue is better? Like, what could you argue reaches the level of you lose two of your top four safeties, um, you lose your top two rushers, top two returning rushers from the year before, uh, you, you lose – and if we're going back to what you lost from the year before, didn't we lose our top two receivers from last year as well? It would have been you, Devin Carter and who else? Devin Carter and Thayer Thomas. So there you, you go. Lose yeah, your, there. You lose your your top two in that regard. You lose your quarterback in Devin Leary. You lose so much, so so much. You lose two of the three headed monster that we had at linebacker in Drake Thomas. And and Isaiah Moore, and you go on to win nine, possibly ten games. Come on now. And I'm gonna tell you, Kelly, as an alum, I hate Carolina. <laughs> I don't care if this is the worst version of Carolina or the best version of Carolina. I don't care if Drake May was the best quarterback they had in school history or the worst. Anytime we can beat the Hills, I love I love it. Do you know how much I hate the Hills? I hate everything about them. Nothing about the Tar Heels makes sense. They call us Hillbillies when their actual team name is a dirty foot. <laughs> and, and, and I've heard when I say that, some UNC fans try to argue, well, no, it's because their boots were marred with tar. Well, if that's the case, then when y'all had that, um, that alternate uniform with the chrome helmet, why wasn't it a boot on your helmet? It was a foot. It was a foot with dirt in the middle. That's literally like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Culture versus agriculture. Yes, because we don't need to eat. Yeah, we can just eat fine cheeses and wines. We don't need actual food and sustenance. Oh, yeah. So long story short, I hate everything about the Star Hills. I hate everything about Baby Blue. If you look around this room right now, there is nothing, not a singular thing. And let me tell you, some members of the media, I wore all black to the game today. And they said, why are you wearing all black? I said, I'm dressed for a funeral. Mm. Mm. I'm dressed for a funeral. I, got, I had that black jacket back there that's on the Peloton, this black shirt, and some black, uh, black pants and black shoes on. Because I was dressed for a funeral because I was ready to see. I was ready to see them boys get buried. And boy, did Doran deliver. And boy, a, did he deliver. A funeral it was. And just kind of echoing Kenton here, there is nothing that makes me happier. Well, okay, Wolfpack wins make me happier. There is second to nothing that makes me happier than UNC losing. And for NC State to go out there and absolutely put it on them tonight. And I, I, I wanted so badly to run it up. And I knew that was probably out of the realm of possibility, the way that we've played this year. But... I wanted so badly to just keep pumping that scoreboard number up higher. I mean, how much we could have a, a twenty, a three touchdown victory in a rivalry is insane. It's insane. That's insane. Like just however you want to cut it or slice it, right? I grew up with the Michigan Ohio State rivalry. That was the yeah. rivalry where I was from, right? Even when Michigan was terrible, the Rich Rod years, Ohio State doing them like that was like you had to be embarrassed. You had to walk into your job. You had to walk into school with your head down, with your head down. And you're looking at two teams that are the exact same level right now, by record at least, we were the exact same level, and we just whooped the three tutties. Yeah. Three tut Let me tell you something. Where I'm from, if you plan to get your mans on, on Xbox, P PlayStation, whatever, and you get up by that much, pass the sticks, man. Pass them, yeah. Pass the sticks. Pass the sticks to the next guy. You clearly don't belong in this league. Go laugh. Go ice up, son. That's what the deal was. So, you know, this, this domination here, and by the way, y'all didn't hear this from me, but don't be surprised if old Willie Brown over there, Willie Mack Brown over there, um, decides to retire because health issues, and he's just too – He's just he just can't do it anymore. Don't be surprised if after National Signing Day, once those kids get fully locked in, all of a sudden he's gone. You didn't hear that from me, though. Yeah, you know, it didn't hear that from me. I'm just saying. I mean, could you blame him? I'd I, love I to see him back. I'd love to see him back. I'd love to see him back. He's oh, a phenomenal coach. He's a phenomenal coach. He's a great man. 
He's a good man, Savannah. He's just in a bad situation. I hate that for him. Oh, I, I absolutely love it. hate that for I, him. I, oh, man. Just, just but, terrible. Kind of transitioning, we're, we're going to have so much more to talk about later on this week as well. But while we're still on this live, transitioning into bowl game talk, I did yeah. see some projections earlier in this week, and I saw one that caught my eye that looked like this is what would happen if NC State were to beat UNC. Brace yourselves. I think a lot of people are going to be upset with this. I think NC State will end up back in the Holiday Bowl. I think we're going to get sent out to San Diego and we will most likely probably get paired up with probably Utah. And that would be one hell of a game, I think. But I think that's probably the most likely scenario. It, it might depend on what else happens maybe next week. Probably not so much unless it's super crazy. But in my little crystal ball here, I see NC State getting sent back out to San Diego reluctantly and will probably get matched up with like a Utah-type team out of the Pac-12. Um, there is... Uh... There's something lurking in the mist that I don't think a lot of people realize. We're still in the hunt for either a New Year's Six or that level, that like kind of bracket I, of both. I think it'll be close. I don't know. If it'll we'll it'll be close. I'm not listen. I'm not saying that we're guaranteed there. We're still in the hunt for it. Multiple things that were that had to go our way went our way in that regard. What do I mean by that? Or what do you mean by that, Kenny? Well, let me explain to you. Number one, Louisville had to lose today and they have to lose next week as well. Because if Louisville ends up behind us, we get the ACC's automatic bid into a New Year's Six Bowl because Florida State will be in the playoff. Not only that, Alabama had to win too because Alabama is on the cusp and if they lose to Georgia, they were going to be kind of in that next bracket of like, oh yeah, they're they're gonna get a um they're gonna get that type of bowl that's like right on the cusp of, of New Year's six or whatnot. So they had to win. And if they beat Georgia, congratulations, those two are probably gonna be in the playoffs. So, like, you know, you you've got that going there. Michigan and Ohio State, that's another one. Michigan is a team that if they lost, there's no way that they would have got into the playoff. There's no right. way that they would have been in that conversation. They would have got dropped down into that type of bowl game we're looking at. Ohio State lost. So they could be another team that ends up in there. Long story short, there's a way that NC State ends up in the New Year's Six Bowl. And we got a lot of help today. A lot of help. Do we still need more help? Yes. Yes, we do. I'm not going to lie to you and say that's not true. We do need more help going into next week. We need certain teams to win, certain teams to lose. Grace and I will break that down throughout the week as I find out more information. But right now, we're close. We're and close. how about one of those situations that did help us out? The old gunslinger, Devin Leary, beat Louisville today on his Kentucky team. That mm -hmm. is a situation that could boost NC State into a favorable position. Of course, there is still yeah. a lot, still fluid, still lots to still change, but wouldn't it be something if Devin Leary actually helped NC State season after all uh, this year? That would be that'd be pretty crazy. But Absolutely. the bowl pro the bowl projections, I guess, they're simply just projections. You can make some yeah. inferred decisions at this point, but I don't know. Would I like to see NC State go back to San Diego? No, absolutely not. I think it brings up too many unhealed wounds from a couple yeah. seasons ago. Yeah. But I would like to see them. I saw some folks mention the Outback Bowl. That'd be a fun game. I think mm -hmm. the Pop Tart Bowl would be a fun time. If we get to the Pop Tart Bowl, I'm going. I think that's where is the Pop Tart Bowl? I don't even care. I'll go. I mean, no, I right. think last year it might have been Arizona because it was the the Cheez It Bowl, if I'm not mistaken, and now it became the Pop Tart Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, but that that's a bowl game that's too fun to pass up. I'll make the trip for that one. But NC State now is in a position where they're playing excellent football. I say bring on nearly anyone. I, I don't want to see Georgia. We're not going to see Georgia, obviously, but bring on like yeah. literally anyone. I am so confident in this defense right now that I want anyone. If you can put the absolute clamps on a UNC offense that is that good, and again, they looked pretty checked out from the get-go tonight, but I would – Not our problem. Defense. Not our yeah. problem. You can only play who's in front of you. That is none of my business. I would put this defense up against nearly anyone at this point. 
I thousand percent agree. And another team that we could be looking at in the bowl game, if we get one of the ones that has a tie into the Big Ten, we could probably be seeing Iowa. The under over for that game would be like eight and a half. It'd be terribly low. Ah, oh, what a game. No, but very seriously, this is there are a lot of things that that, you know, our offense has looked better and better by the game. Yes. And I think that's one of the more underrated stories of this turnaround. Yes. Our defense has been phenomenal, has been coming along, has been getting better. But so is our offense. So is our offense. Our offense has come along in ways that we're just like, if anybody would have told you, if anybody would have told you, if somebody would have looked you dead in the face after that Duke game and said, hey, by the way, Grayson, in the last five games of the season, you're only going to be held under 21 one time. You're only going to be held under 35 in the last four games of the season. You're only going to be held under 35 twice. Would you have believed? Me? Would you I have said, believed? Me? I'd say pass whatever you got over there, brother. <laughs> but that's but that's my point. This offense has turned it on, has turned it around. Think about this. In our first seven games of the season, two times, two times, we put up 13 and three. Think about that now. Think about that. In our first seven games of the season, we scored 24 or less. One, two, three, four, five times. Five. In our last five games, we did that one, twice. The last three, 26, 35, 39, respectively. This is, what else can you ask for? What else can you ask for? I want to I wanna float out another situation here before we get out of here. It will probably make you lose sleep. I know it's going to keep me up tonight. But if NC State were to beat that Louisville team back in week whatever it was, four or five, obviously we would be in the ACC championship. But if you look across that hypothetical field, you'd be playing a Florida State team without Jordan Travis. And Rodemaker was shaking up tonight too against Florida. Yep. I mean, just but just you know another what? NC State blank situation to file away in the cabinet here. But, but like, you know what? I'm I'm not even going. I'm not even going to look back at that for this reason. This team is so special. I don't even want to look at what could be. I want to no. look dead in the face of what is, and what is is again three straight wins back to back to back. Wins against the boys in baby blue. Yeah. Back to back to back. That's what we got on the docket. 19 point win. Hold on. Wait a minute. Five game winning streak out of when many people told Grayson and I, hey, you're crazy if you think this team is winning another game. They said that. I remember the live in, after Duke, and I remember because Grace and I were both frustrated, but we both said every game is winnable, every game is losable. It's up to this team to decide what type of season you want to have. Yeah, they've made the decision. In the words of uh, in the words of Solange knows they decided, they decided, then they decided exactly what they wanted, and and hey, you know, it, as as much as as much as we could look at. Uh, the the things that didn't happen, the things that didn't materialize, and all that. I want to look at what has materialized because, yes, you know, in the words of Andy Ari, this is a beautiful surprise. This is a beautiful surprise. When I said every game was winnable and every game was losable, I didn't expect them to win every single game. I knew that they were going to get to a bowl game. I knew that. Much. But if somebody would have said, "Can marsh has got the death being pointed at Earth? NC State wins nine before a bowl game." What you think? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I don't think they get there. I don't think, and lo and behold, here we are at nine games. You know, what a time. Yeah, what a time. I, I, I say all that to say I am so immensely proud of this football team. I am so mm -hmm. proud of Brennan Armstrong. I am so proud of Peyton Wilson, of Dave Dorn, Casey Concepcion, the offense, the defense, the coaching staff, this program. I am so freaking proud. The turnaround Absolutely. is something that I will remember for a long time. This team in 2023 has been one heck of a ride. And I hate, I can't believe we're talking about the last regular season game of this, of this year already. Where did yeah. the season go? That was week 12 of the season. What just happened? I'm, I'm yeah. a little upset about that.
Because the next time we talk a football game, it'll be the bowl game, and then that'll be a mini bow on the season here. That's that's crazy to me. But I'll 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 move that because I want to get us out of here. I know it's almost one in the morning here. So many yeah. of you still in here with us. That's unbelievable. Thank you so much. That brings me to my next point. This football season has been very special for us as well on this program. We've been slowly building this podcast as a place to provide some laughs, some insight, some predictions, a look into Wolfpack Athletics week in and week out. And we have gotten an, an incredible amount of support from Wolfpack Nation this football season. We get recognized sometimes out yeah. public now. Yeah. My brain, like, I can't even conceptualize that. That's so crazy to me. And we mm -hmm. can't do any of this without y'all. So thank you so much for all of the support this season, all of the tweets, the YouTube comments, the subscriptions. We're almost up to a yeah. thousand. That's crazy. Yep. Thank yep. you all so, so much. We're we're still and, building this thing. We're not going anywhere. So don't be confused on that. We're not and, going anywhere. And, and Grayson won't say this because he's not the type of guy uh, to do so. But Grayson was needed to take this show to the next level. He was. When this show was just me and I was doing my thing, it was great. It was good. It was fun. But I I needed somebody to tee me up. I needed somebody to cue me up. I needed I needed Grayson. I needed Grayson. And, um, you know, without without uh, Mr. Boone showing up when he did, you know, this, this thing doesn't go where we're going right now. So um, – just as much as I'm grateful to all the listeners and everybody who does what they do, I'm grateful beyond measure to Grayson as well. Because again, brother, you are more than half of this podcast, man. You you make this thing go. There is no no engine in this car without you. It's just a body and cute things and bells and whistles on the outside. But you you make this thing go, brother. Hey, man, this is just the warm up. We ain't even stretch yet. We're Absolutely. just getting going on this Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. That will do it for us here tonight on the live stream. Again, NC State celebrating a massive win in Rivalry Week, beaten up on the boys in Baby Blue by a score of 39 to 20. Nine and three. What a season. What a regular season. We still got a little bit of season left here. We're going to get out of here again. Thank you all so much for the support tonight. Not just tonight, but all season long. Another big live stream again after the big win here. Thank you all so much. Make sure to hit that. Like button on your way out the door. Drop your comments in the comment box. I'll be sure to get to all of those. Tell a friend to tell a friend to mash that subscribe button. We're still growing this thing. We're not going anywhere. Don't be confused. Thank you all so much. Go Pack. GTHC. Now let's all go to bed. What a night.